My name is Joaquin Jimenez, and first of all, thank you to the organizers of the session for allowing us to make our to present our communication. Um, I am going to speak about the settlement patterns uh, in the central and southeastern area of uh, the Iberian Peninsula. Um, it is our intention to better contribute to the understanding of the evolution and the social meaning of uh, cultural behavior of the first uh, agricultural societies. To do so, uh, we have used uh, the existing data coming from excavations and systematic uh, survey programs performed in the, er in the study area. Mainly, uh, we will use uh, radi radiocarbon dates from the excavation sites and the settlement information from the surveys. In order to create a chronological framework to organize all the information, we have divided the five millennium object uh, of analysis in cultural periods. Uh, these cultural periods uh, contain a series of uh, important events, uh, climatic and economical, which will be crossed uh, with analysis uh, to look for possible uh, causalities. We have used the radiocarbon information coming from the excavations of the archaeological sites in the area. We have filtered and audited the initial sample of uh, 394 dates, and we have rejected all those samples coming from aggregates and those uh, which, are, uh, which are not coming from a clear anthropic context. Also, we have rejected those with a standard deviation uh, bigger than 100. And after the filtering process, we have uh, 294 dates, all coming from singular samples and from well-known contexts. After calibrating the dates, we have calculated the SCDPD or some calibrated density probability distribution, which will be used for us as a demographic proxy. To refine the problems uh, associated with the calibration curve, uh, we also have cal calculated the SCDRD or some calibrated date range distribution. <coughs> it provides um, less noisy panoramic without the distortion caused uh, by the calibration. We also have used the, uh, the settlement information coming from the systematic survey programs. There are 802 sites in the whole area with uh, 61 offering radiocarbon datations at different levels of them. In order to calculate the site density by cultural period, we will only use uh, habitat or settlement sites, open air and caves. And we have used only open air sites to calculate the occupied area by cultural period due to difficulties associated with uh, cultural attrib attribution of caves in many cases. The sample is uneven uh, in the study areas can be seen in the graph. Um, the surveys have uh, focused in finding different cultural periods through the record. So we have decided to divide the area in three parts in order to control the research bias. To test the biasing in the uh, radiocarbon sample, we have crossed the SCDPD information from the area uh, with that coming from the settlement uh, and uh, we have realized that it introduces some issues. But in general, we can observe the same tendencies, but with uh, a magnitude difference. The comparison is problematic due to the different scales uh, of comparison uh, uh, between those, the, both infos. Uh, there are two significant anomalies. Uh, we can see uh, a big gap uh, or hiatus uh, found between the uh, 6.2 event and uh, which is also present in other areas in the peninsula as distant as Portugal, for instance. 
Uh, and also we can find a distortion in the transition from uh, Neolithic 1A and Neolithic 1B from the uh, regional phase. The settlement evolution uh, with some rise and fall events seems to follow an exponential growth uh, pattern as can be seen uh, in, the, in the evolution maps which are covering a period from uh, Mesolithic uh, MRA and uh, till the Bronze Age in the last, in the last one. We can also uh, extract some general char char characteristics from the observed info about the sites. The location of the settlements of the first Neolithic groups is always near water courses, rivers and ravines especially, and humid areas as lakes, in fertile and light soils always. One of the main recognized traits for this prehistoric phase, uh, in this area at least, is the low work investment dedicated to the building of the housing. These houses used to be grouped with uh, big spacing between them and always nearby the cultivation areas. Sometimes uh, the settlements are surrounded by ditches uh, with big work investment and uh, the burials corresponding to this long period are individual and are placed uh, mainly in caves with modest grave goods. From the 5th millennium BC on, we can observe a series of transformations which would be considered a reorganization in the territory occupation and also in the exploitation system. The result is a different settlement pattern which is shown in the popping up of uh, huge size settlements in the lowlands of the valleys, uh, which contains in uh, many cases storing pits or, or silos and are uh, also common in these uh, settlements surrounding ditches as uh, delimiting structures uh, and habitat frontier. One of the traits of these settlements is the big amount of excavated structures that we have said before in the ground, all of which shows different morphologies and sizes. <coughs> Their function is also unknown and they used to contain garbage from the, from the time they were amortized uh, and in some cases they are used as burial pits. The remains of the settlement structures correspond to fragments of mud with vegetal imprints and pole holes. It is difficult uh, to estimate how many cottages could form the town, whose extension is defined by the dispersion of the structures. The silos uh, settlement will be a constant in the archaeology record in the zone until the stone constructions generalization around the third millennium uh, ending. In the Calcolithic, the presence of copper fragments is not uncommon in the sites, um, uh, some of which are uh, coming from the southwestern uh, part of the peninsula, uh, showing the presence of uh, long range exchange networks. Also, the presence of elaborated uh, flint arrowheads becomes common in the record at this moment. From Rome Sage on, uh, material and social transformation are radical. Little villages and housing acquire a new visualization, uh, and the settlement pattern uh, profoundly changes. And the villages settle in the high part of the hills and mountains. This tendency uh, was already present uh, in other peninsular zones uh, with the presence of stone as a construction uh, material getting uh, normal. This increment of work investment tells us about a certain will of staying in the territory. At the same time, we can uh, interpret certain settlement typology attending to their dimensions and location. Domestic units pre present radical morphological changes opposite to the simple cottage habitat uh, from the previous periods, freestanding, uh, disposed in extension and dispersed, uh, rectangular uh, or square floor housing appear in this moment 
concatenating each other to create dense occupation units. Internally, these habitation uh, spaces are drafted with partitions which uh, compartmentalize the space. This new way to understand the space that puts the action in the fragmentation and the aggregation could be a reflection of strong social changes. The settlement patterns reflect an attempt to guarantee access to agricultural resources and at the same time pursues a growing security search. The magnitude of all these changes would be indicative uh, of a new social reality in which the domestic unit would turn into the main socialization space. In addition, part of the buried uh, would be integrated into the settlement in some cases. We can talk of two different areas in the Bronze Age of uh, the area of our study, uh, the Bronze Valenciano and the Argar culture. Uh, the presence of metal objects uh, becomes common uh, in this moment, and in the southern area, even uh, gold and silver are present sometimes. The arrival uh, um, of uh, Sicilian amber uh, in the Mediterranean Peninsula started in the fourth millennium BC, at least as Murillo Barroso uh, study uh, pointed uh, recently. Big presence of amber can be registered in southwestern uh, part of the peninsula, especially in Valencina de la Concepción site and southeastern site in Los Millares, especially in funerary context. Uh, after an apparent decline in the use of amber, uh, Baltic succinite appears to replace the Sicilian cimetite, or cimetite in the Iberian Peninsula in the second half of the second millennium before Christ. Um, the more significant influx of the Baltic amber will take place from the turn of the millennium on. Also, uh, the presence of Asiatic ivory is also confirmed in the peninsula since the uh, last uh, part of the Neolithic uh, or Neolithic 2B of this regional phase. Um, we know there were uh, links between the peninsula and Nor North Africa by the, by the words of uh, Harrison and Chapman. Um, and it is plausible that Sicilian amber reached Iberia through exchanges uh, with North Africa. But uh, the ivory uh, is also present in our study area, being more common in the Bronze uh, and Calcolithic ages. Uh, its presence points necessarily to long distance exchange networks, no matter uh, the route used to do so. Um, as some, work, some works point, the existence of sailing boats capable of long-range travels through the Mediterranean in the area is more than probable. The routes are a mystery, but they should pass through central Mediterranean somehow. The amber appears at southern Iberian sites and its distribution is similar to that of ivory objects, suggesting that uh, both materials reached the, penin the Iberic Peninsula following the same or similar channels. As we have seen in this uh, work in progress, uh, all clues suggest the possibility of a relationship between the central Mediterranean, Sicily in this case, and the eastern coast of the Iberic Peninsula. Uh, it could represent uh, a stimulating research, research line for the future in order to better understand the social exchange dynamics uh, in the framework of uh, recent uh, Mediterranean prehistory. So thank you for your patience. And